Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be talking about the series that I completed in the year of 2015. I did one of these videos at the very beginning of this year talking about the series that I completed in 2014, so I'll leave that in the card symbol and you can check that out. And in that video, I talk about wanting to increase that number of series that I finish in a year. And last year, I finished eight, and I was hoping to finish ten because booktubers, we love to start series, and a lot of the time, we never end up finishing them. So I was on a mission this year to finish series, so I ended up finishing... 18. So this video might be a little bit long. I don't care. <laughs> so the first series that I ended up finishing was the Trouble Twister series by Garth Nix and Sean Williams. This is a middle grade low fantasy series that follows two main characters, their twins, Jack and Jade, and they find out that they are what's called Trouble Twisters, and they have magical abilities and they have to go stay with their grandmother and learn how to control their powers. This is just a super fun, easy, middle grade series. I don't think it's for everyone. I don't think that a lot of older people will really appreciate it because the series becomes formulaic after a while. It, it's kind of the same story every book, but I still really enjoyed it because I love middle grade and I just love superpowers. And if you, you have a kid in your life that loves superpowers, I think they would really enjoy this book. You meet a lot of cool characters. You meet a lot of cool creatures and you also get a lot of life lessons that it's important for middle grade readers to read. So I really like this series. I think I gave it four stars but it's definitely not a series that adults are going to like as well if that makes sense. So the next series that I finished was the Grisha trilogy by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book Shadow and Bone. This series is about, I'm laughing because Sam from Thoughts on Tomes always says that I hate this series, but I really don't hate it. It's about this girl named Alina and she finds out that she has a magical ability that makes her a part of the Grisha, and so she has to go to this special school to learn about her abilities. I like people with powers. You're gonna see that in all of these books pretty much. And basically she is one of the most powerful people of this Grisha population, and so she has to deal with coming into her destiny and all of that sort of thing. I liked this series overall. I didn't really like the last book. I think that these books are more romance heavy than plot heavy. And I usually prefer to have more plot than a focus on romance. So this has a love square in it. She has like three different options. So if you don't like love triangles, you probably won't like this book. But a lot of people do like rooting for different characters for the main character to end up with. I just, it's not my favorite, but I did really enjoy it. I think I gave it four stars. And then I think the last book was a three star book for me. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> the next series that I finished was the Books of Raxura series by Martha Wells. This is a series that I don't think I've seen anybody else talk about on BookTube. I picked it up because I thought the like cover was really just super fantasy, super just right up my alley pretty much and it, it was that it was exactly up my alley it's about this boy named moon and at the beginning of the this book he is just a loner he doesn't know where he belongs and he really just wants to find the place where he's going to fit in and so he is just on a journey and once he finds someone of his own species he just kind of clings onto them and then he starts to figure out all of those things and he starts to figure out where he belongs and the rules of the society that he has not grown up in I really, really enjoyed this trilogy. I think I gave the first book 4.5 stars. The second book was 3 stars for me. And then the third book ended up being a 5 star book for me. It really brought it home. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be reading the two companion novels to this series soon. And she's actually going to be continuing the series. So I am just so excited for that. I don't know if it's going to be the same characters, but it's definitely set in the same world. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. The Cloud Roads by Martha Wells. Awesome. I then finished the Archived Duology by Victoria Schwab, V.E. Schwab. I really doubt that these are going to be continued. I just think that her success with the other books that she's been writing, like the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy series and uh, how Vicious was really popular, I just don't see her going back to this series because it was not continued by the publisher, so not really sure, but I'm going to treat it as a duology because I actually thought that the books kind of ended well in the second book. I mean, I still had my questions and I would definitely read more books in the series, but the way that the story ended, it ended okay for me. It's about this girl who is a part of this group of people that are in charge of this place called the Archive, and the Archive is where they keep a copy of everybody's bodies with all of their memories inside of it, and sometimes the bodies wake up. It's not dead, they're not dead bodies, they're just kind of copies of those bodies. Sometimes they wake up and they try to go into the outer, which is the real world. It's her job to find them and send them back to the Archive, and she gets in tons of trouble with that because 
problems. <laughs> I ended up really enjoying this duology. I thought that Mackenzie was a pretty realistic character, and especially for why, because sometimes they can be a little unrealistic, but I thought that Mackenzie was really good. I definitely recommend definitely recommend it, and if you like YA fantasy and it sounds interesting to you, definitely pick it up. So then I finished the Unwind Astrology by Neil Shusterman. This is the first book, Unwind. The last book is Undivided. This is a dystopian US where parents can have their children be what's called unwound and they are harvested for all their parts and then all their parts are given to other people. It's basically forced organ donation and you can be unwound between the ages of 13 to 17 or something like that. And the one of the main characters' names is Connor, so I love that. I loved this first book and I really loved the second book. The third book went downhill for me because my edition of it just has so many mistakes in it. I don't think that everyone's edition has that, but mine definitely did. It was tons of spelling mistakes and it just kind of pushed me out of the story a lot. And it was also a setup book for the fourth book. And then the fourth book ended up being one of those books that was super convenient. But overall, I did really enjoy the series. So I think that overall, I think the series is probably a four star series for me, but Neil Shusterman is one of my favorite young adult authors. I think that all of his books have tons of great messages and bring up good things, like good discussion topics that you can talk to people about. So I really enjoyed this series and I recommend it as well. The next series I finished was The Air Chronicles by Cinda Williams Chima. This was originally a trilogy and then she added two more books onto the series. And I didn't at first think that it was super necessary because the series ends very well. The, the trilogy is completely in its own and if you wanted to you could treat this series as a trilogy but I ended up deciding to pick up the next two books and read those and at first I was a little butthurt about it being continued. I'm not a big fan of when people continue series when they end so well but I did actually like the next two books. I thought the problem that was introduced was really interesting and really new and it definitely gave you another aspect to look through in this fantasy world. It's, it's a low fantasy young adult series so it's set in our world but there's some magic stuff behind the scenes kind of thing basically in this world if you are what's called a wear person like one of the wear you're born with a stone inside of your chest that is called a wear stone and there are five different types i think there's warriors wizards sorcerers enchanters and seers i think that's it and at the beginning of the first book there are two main wizard guilds that are at war against each other and instead of having wizards fight wizards they have uh, representatives that are warriors fight each other to the death and that's how they decide their political differences i really enjoy this series slash trilogy slash five books a lot then i finished the books of beginning trilogy by john stevens the first book is the emerald atlas and this is about three siblings emma kate and michael and at the beginning of the first book they're in an orphanage and so they end up going to a different orphanage and then get in tons of trouble they find this book the Emerald Atlas and it just causes so much mischief for them and they get in tons of trouble throughout the series I think that this middle grade series also got a little bit formulaic but I did really really enjoy it I think I gave this book five stars or 4.5 stars the second book five stars and then the third book was the three star book for me because I kind of got annoyed by the repetitive nature of the series but still one of those series that has a lot of good messages for young readers I really did enjoy this series but the last book was kind of a letdown I'm like seeing a little bit of a trend. The next series that I finished, I started and finished it this year, so I read all six slash three books, and that is the Ryuria Revelation series by Michael J. Sullivan. I've talked about this series so much on my channel, I don't feel like I need to talk about it, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. So this series follows two main characters, Royce and Hadrian, and Royce is an assassin and Hadrian is a mercenary. They just get caught up in all of this political drama that is set up by all these other people. They're framed for murdering a king, and then everything just goes crazy from there. It is the best way to get into adult fantasy from young adult fantasy if you're wanting to make that transition or you just kind of want to check out some adult fantasy. This series is perfect because it reads very similar to YA, but it's considered adult. So yeah, I just love, love this series. The last book is Perfection. Best series ending I probably have ever read in my entire life. It's just so great. I love it so much. Then I finished the Jack Blank Adventure series by Matt McClush, and my first book is called Jack Blank and the Imagination, but the paperback is called The Accidental Hero. So it's about a boy named Jack, and he's living at an orphanage, and he doesn't know what his last name is, so he's called Jack Blank, and he's totally obsessed with all these comic books and, and like science fiction kind of stuff, which isn't allowed in his orphanage, and then he finds out that all of these things that he loves and 
all of these characters from comic books are all real and they live in this place called the Imagination. Then he goes to the Imagination, he actually finds out there are all of these plots that are involving him now and so it's just a lot of drama. It's basically your, your classic middle grade main protagonist who has to save the world story. I thought that the Imagination, which is right there, you can see it in the background, was so cool. That's definitely the best part about this book was that this one city has all these different fantasy and science fiction elements that just work so well together and they just end up like there's different sections of the city and so there's different magical laws for each section it's just so cool so this is a trilogy and i kind of hope that matt goes back and writes a couple more books in this series because i think that he left it in a way that jack could have more adventures if matt wanted to go back and write more of them but i think i really did enjoy them i got a little bit annoyed in the middle book because he was making bad decisions and he knew he was making bad decisions and he was still making them but the, then the third book kind of made up for it again. Another series that I started and finished this year was the Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. This is the first book, Assassin's Apprentice. It's about a boy named Fitz Chivalry. He's the bastard son of a prince who gives up his claim to the throne once he finds out that he's sired a bastard, and he ends up dying. So the bastard, his name is Fitz Chivalry, he ends up kind of being adopted by the royal family, and he is forced to become an assassin. And this is his life story, pretty much. It is very entertaining. I loved the first book, loved it. I think I gave it 4.5 stars, didn't like the second book, gave it 3 stars because it was super slow. And then the third book again made up for it and I ended up giving it 4 stars. I think it was because I was expecting it to be extremely slow. If you go into this series, know the first book is pretty fast and then the next two books are pretty slow. There is wit, which is where you can talk to animals, and there is skill, which is where you can kind of read people's minds and talk to people in their minds. I just thought that was really interesting and I just really enjoy this world. I really enjoyed the, the world building that was set up. I didn't really enjoy the main character. Thought at times he could just be so stupid and annoying, but the world is awesome and I just love that there are so many books in this series that I can continue to read. I've read the first book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy, so I'm hoping that in 2016 that'll be one of the trilogies that I end up finishing next year. Then I finished another middle grade series named Fablehaven by Brandon Mull. I love Fablehaven. I love Brandon Mull. I've talked about it so much. It's about Seth and Kendra. They're siblings. They go to stay with their grandparents. They find out there are tons of magical creatures living on their grandparents' property and they get in tons of trouble. Seems to be a theme in books. And it's just one of those things that it's just so well done. The, the ideas and the creatures that he uses aren't new, but how he weaves the story and how everything ends up coming together and working together is awesome. So great. I think my favorite book ended up being the second one, which is called The Grip of the Shadow Plague, but the fourth book was really like a close second. They're just so good, and I am going to be continuing with the next series, Dragon's Watch. <laughs> I'm so excited. I read a lot of middle grade, so I finished the Far World series by J. Scott Savage. This is the first one, Waterkeep. This is about a boy named Marcus who lives on Earth and a girl named Kaija who lives on this parallel world called Far World. There is magic in Far World and there it's elemental magic and so there are these things called elementals and Marcus at the beginning of the first book gets pulled into Far World and then their adventure begins from there. It is super entertaining. I really enjoyed the characters in this world and I'm just really excited to see where Jeff Scott Savage, J. Scott Savage, I always say Jeff, goes with his writing. I want to see all the other series that he's coming out with. He came out with another book called The Mysteries of Cove, I think. And The next series that I finished was The Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is just one of those classic fantasy books that everyone has to at least attempt to read at some point in their lifetime. I ended up really enjoying it. I just really liked the world, all of the lore and everything that he sets up. The elves are so cool. Tom Bombadil is amazing. If you don't know what The Lord of the Rings is about, I just... what? Then I finished a YA fantasy paranormal romance series. I'm definitely past my paranormal romance days and I found that out this year. And that is the Serena Legacies trilogy by Anna Banks. If you want to read this, just pretend it's a duology. Do not ever read the third book. It is terrible. I only read the last book this year and I think if I had read this first book this year, I would not have continued on with the series. It's just not one of those things that I'm into anymore. But I remember when I read them, I did end up enjoying them. So it's about this girl named Emma, and she is vacationing in Florida and something 
terrible happens, and then her life is changed after that. Whoa! Who would have guessed it? Then I finished the Wings of Fire series by Tweety Sutherland. This is one of my favorite middle grade series, hands down. Love it so much. This is the third book, The Hidden Kingdom. The first one is called The Dragonette Prophecy. I don't own the first one. I only own three through five. So I just really love it so much. Basically in this world, there are different types of dragons and the sand wings are having this huge revolutionary war and it's dragged in every other type of dragon into this world. And so there's three different sides because there were three daughters to the Sandwing Queen when she died and so they're all vying for the throne. They're all trying to kill their sisters and claim the throne and so there's a prophecy about five different dragonettes, one from different types of dragons and they will decide the fate of the world and which Sandwing will be the queen. It's super good, it's very very violent so maybe not for the youngest of middle grade readers but I really did enjoy it. If you like middle grade, read the series. So the third last book series that I read this year was the Heartland Trilogy by Chuck Wendig. I got all of these books from NetGalley for free like on my Kindle app and I liked them so much that I, I bought the first book because they're that amazing. I loved them so much. I think I gave the first two 4.5 stars and the last one was four stars or something like that. They're so unpredictable. There's so many different paths that the story could take and you really, you really just have no idea where the story is going to end up. No idea at all. I didn't. And so that was my favorite thing about this series was uh, the unpredictability of it and, and just being surprised at every turn. It's a science fiction series where the rich people are up on these floating flotillas and then all of the heartlanders, the people that are poor, live on the ground and their lives are miserable and the world has been taken over by this genetically modified corn and it's kind of carnivorous. If you're walking by it, it will lean into you and try to cut you that kind of thing and it'll soak up your blood and stuff but the corn is the main fuel for all of these flotillas and everything that happens around dystopian world so it was really good i definitely recommend this trilogy the second to last thing that i finished in 2015 was the kingmaker kingbreaker duology by karen miller it's about a boy named asher and he is a part of the lower group in society and he ends up traveling to the main capital of their, their country, their world, basically, and he befriends the prince. And then the, it's just a very politically driven book, and there's there's this prophecy about Asher. And so there are these other players that are trying to get Asher to fulfill his duty in this prophecy without letting him know about the prophecy. This duology is very, very, very slow. Probably the slowest book I've read this year or in my life. The first book, I gave it three stars out of five stars. I liked it. The ending was terrible. I was going to continue read the second book. The first book is called The Innocent Mage. The second book is called The Awakened Mage. I read the second book. I didn't like it. I just thought it was so slow. There was like, in total, this is both books in one, and half of this book could have been cut out, and it would have been fine. It should have just been one book, and just had all of the important details in there. I don't think it needed to be this long, and it was just frustrating. The characters ended up being really frustrating sometimes. They didn't act according to the way that they were described. Like, it was just so out of character for them to do these certain things. I don't recommend this duology. I really just don't. Sorry. <laughs> the last trilogy slash series that I read in 2015 is the Jeremiah Hunt trilogy by Joseph Nassis. This is the first book Eyes to See and this is actually one of those books that I was like, I'm gonna try out this random book from Book Outlet and see if I like this other genre and I totally did. It was probably the first urban fantasy book that I've ever read and it was kind of a darker urban fantasy book. Basically this guy named Jeremiah Hunt, he has lost his daughter. His daughter went missing five years ago. And in that time, he met this really strange character and he ended up trading his eyesight to be able to see that which is hidden. And so he is now blind and he is just still trying to find out what has happened to his daughter. I feel like a lot of urban fantasy series end up having different problems per book or they have little story arcs that are covered in each book and this is similar to that, where the first book deals with one problem, the second book deals with a different problem, and the third book deals with a third problem. And each one, the characters build upon themselves, but the plot is kind of started over in each one. So this book, I think I gave it four stars, the second book I gave it three stars, and then the third book I gave it four stars again. <laughs> it's one of those series that I wish he would just write more books because there are so many questions that I still have about the characters, but it ends in a very satisfying point. You're not going to be unsatisfied by the ending or anything like that. Everything is wrapped up. All of the important plot points are wrapped up and there's just a couple of things you're like, who is that character that 
randomly came in for five seconds. I kind of want to know about them. So I think he wrote some other books that overlap this series. I found one of them on Amazon for free, so I think I'm going to end up reading that one. It's about this group that is kind of introduced a little bit in the third book, so I'm really excited to see how all of that plays out and see how that compares to these books. But I definitely did enjoy these books and it's definitely made me want to read more urban fantasy. So maybe this is a good trilogy to try out if you're wanting to try out more urban fantasy. I don't know how it compares to the best urban fantasy or anything like that because I haven't read much urban fantasy. I kind of want to read Stormfront, but, but I also want to read Jim Butcher's Codex Alera series first, so I don't really know what I'm doing. If you guys have urban fantasy recommendations that are not romance urban fantasy laney, let me know those down in the comments because I would definitely like to check out more urban fantasy in the future. Oh, those were all of the series that I finished in the year of 2015. As you can see, I enjoyed some didn't like others. Overall, I think I did really well with my challenge of completing more series. I'd like to keep that going in the year of 2016. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what are some series that you completed this year that you would recommend, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!